Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. It is Sunday, December 4th, 2022, and here's the integral of the day. It's a surface integral. We had a request come in. So evaluate the surface integral of the function g over the surface s. g of xyz equals y over rad 36y squared plus 1. S is the surface of the parabolic cylinder, 30y squared plus 10z equals 80, bounded by the planes x equals 0, x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals 0. All right, remember, surface integrals are double integrals that we integrate over some region. And to determine what region you're going to integrate over, you examine the surface and you figure out what plane would be the easiest projection of the surface to integrate over. So I'm looking at the surface here. Either I'm going to solve for y or I'm going to solve for z. It looks like it's easier to solve for z. Okay, so let's start off and do that. So 10z equals 80 minus 30y squared. So z equals 8 minus 3y squared. So now I've written my surface as a function of y, or x and y. And notice also g, this function, involves only y's, which is good. We don't want any z's in there, if I'm going to integrate over the xy plane, which is what I'm leaning towards, since I have my surface now basically as a function of x and y. All right? So this is all making me lean towards the fact that we're going to integrate over the xy plane. And so when you set up your surface integral, you always have double integral, right, over the surface s. We're going to be integrating our function g, and then we have ds. And in this particular case, if we're integrating over the xy plane, then ds is going to equal square root of partial with respect to x squared plus partial with respect to y squared plus 1 dA. All right, we can take care of those partials if we want now. And then we are going to have to graph so we can determine exactly the limits of integration for our integration region. And then do we want to stay rectangular? Do we want to switch? I don't know until I have a nice picture. Um, but let's just do the easy stuff. So partial with respect to x, this is based off of the surface right here. I don't see any x's, so that guy's 0. And then partial with respect to y is negative 6y. So ds is going to equal square root 0 squared plus 36y squared plus 1 dA. And I'm going to leave it like that. I don't know right now if that's going to be dx dy, dy dx, etc. So put this on the back burner. Now let's graph the surface. So z equals 8 minus 3y squared. Look here, look here. You should be able to graph that, right? In the yz plane. And then we're just going to project it. And then again, the surface is bounded by the planes x equals 0. Okay, that's the yz plane. x equals 1. Got it y equals 0, and z equals 0. So we're in the first octant. How lovely. Did the direction say graph anywhere? No. Can you weasel your way around the problem and not graph it? Perhaps. Will you actually understand what you're doing? No. Is it advisable? No. Okay. I do require my students to graph everything. Because there's just no other way to really get through them masterfully, okay? You can go through the motions, but you won't really know what's going on. All right, so here we go. If we're graphing the surface, I can tell right off the bat, we have an intercept at 0, 0, 8. So let's put that there. Here's 8. And then if we want another intercept, like I'd love to know where it hits the y-axis, right? So if z is 0... We can do that over here. So 0 equals 8 minus 3y squared. 3y squared is 8. y equals plus or minus rad 8 thirds. I'm just going to use the positive because we're bounded by y equals 0. So over here, we've got rad 8 thirds. OK, great. So here so far is a piece of our surface. And then 
we're also bounded by the planes. Okay, x equals zero, we got that. x equals one, let's add that in here. Here's x equals one. Now, to graph, I'm just gonna project in that direction. Do we want it super precise? Of course we do. So we're just gonna paste that little strip over here. Yes, okay, beautiful. And then we'll draw this coming down. Ooh. Do -do -do -do. Beautiful. Okay. So there's our surface S. Allow me to shade it for you so you can see it better. Here it is. This portion of the parabolic cylinder. Notice it's bounded by x equals zero. Where's x equals zero? Back here. It's bounded by x equals one, y equals zero down here, and then, oh no, that's z equals zero, excuse me, and then y equals zero back here. Okay, so here's our surface. All right, we already decided we're gonna integrate over the xy plane. So our integration region is down here. All right, sometimes if it's more complicated, you need to draw separately a little two-dimensional graph of your integration region. I think we could all handle it the way it is right now, but I'll show you if it were more complicated what I would expect from my students to do before they proceeded, okay? So you would just say, oh, we're integrating over the xy plane and I need a lovely graph of that integration region so I can set up my limits of integration appropriately. Sometimes you gotta switch to polar or do something fancy schmancy, yes? So x goes from zero to one, y goes from zero to rad eight thirds, and all we have is this harmless little rectangle. I mean, could we have asked for anything nicer? I don't think so. Sometimes you have to come up with the some sort of linear equation that's bounding the region, not in this case. Love it, we love rectangles. So now we're ready to roll. Let's do this double integral right here. Surface integral time. Okay, so again, I'll rewrite. We have integral of our surface. We have a function to integrate over as well. So what order do we want to integrate in? Let me just leave it undecided for a moment. What was g? g was y over rad 36y squared plus 1. And then ds was rad 36y squared plus 1 da. Oh, here's the lovely thing. Someone who wrote this problem really cared about us. This cancels out effortlessly. So the only variable I'm going to have to integrate with respect to is y, right? Because x is just constant here. So let's do dy dx. Sound good? All right. So that means if we set this up here, we have y. I decided to use dy dx as my order of integration. So that means I need the limits for y to be on the inside integral. So limits of y are from zero to rad eight thirds, and then the limits for x are from zero to one. Beautiful. Okay, so first, let's see, antiderivative of y, that's just gonna be one half y squared. Okay, and then we still have this integral from zero to one out here. One half y squared, zero to rad eight thirds dx. Oh, aren't we glad I didn't bother rationalizing or messing with that? Yes. Okay. So then we have integral 0 to 1, 1 half, evaluating the limits of integration, rad 8 thirds squared is just 8 thirds minus 0, the lower limit, dx. Huh. And then this is just integral 0 to 1, 4 thirds, dx. So that's just going to be 4 thirds x from 0 to 1, which is 4 thirds. Okay, good. Surface integrals are the foundation for evaluating flux, yes? So make sure you have these under control. Don't confuse it with just finding surface area. When you find surface area, the difference is there's no function. Surface integral is you're integrating a function over a surface, yes? Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful, intriguing, 
If it's confusing, I have a whole playlist of Calculus 3 video lectures. Perhaps you need a refresher first before you jump in and start doing these kinds of problems. And if you have any requests for what kind of integrals you want to see, I know finals are coming up, let me know. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And like and share with your little classmates or whoever you think might enjoy the video. You can also see what I'm up to on Instagram and TikTok at Math TV with Professor V. All right, guys, take care.